Hey everyone, Brandflix here, back with another Eternal Return video. For today's video, I want to revisit the best character to climb with list that I did a few weeks ago, just because I want to keep that updated every time there's a major patch hit. So obviously, I'll be covering Korea stuff, just because Korea generally seems to be a lot more willing to jump on meta bandwagons. So if you're in the NA, SA, or EU regions, and you want to play something that seems probably pretty strong that not everyone else knows about yet, then hopefully this video should be pretty good for you. So with all that said and done, let me just jump right into the best character right now to play in the game for SoQ, and that's going to be Bernice. So why is Bernice suddenly so good? Obviously he got buffed a little bit in the patch with his W getting a higher ratio and his attack speed being bumped up a bit, but the reason why he's being played so much more is because Korea has finally discovered that you don't have to play Bernice as a crit auto attack character. Because of his buff to his AP ratio, Koreans have been experimenting more with an AP stack and armor pen stack build that's been performing very well and he's been played so much that he actually made this video kind of annoying to research because I find a character, think that they're pretty good for climbing with, and then I click on the profile and it's Bernice. This happened for four different characters. Hart, Rozzy, Kyungwoo, and like a few other characters that just seemed good but weren't good because they're just Bernice characters. So again, Bernice is so strong that he's literally warping the Korea ladder based on who is willing to play him for that sweet, sweet RP gain. Um, he's not the best character when it comes to like damage output, not the best character when it comes to CC or surviving dive, but he's so good at catch and he's so good at taking picks that in the squad meta where it's really hard to like close down team fights, Bernice's ability to just root somebody from across the map and then root them again for two more seconds and then follow up with a sniper skill to finish them off is just so invaluable. I think even if he is toned down a little bit, he still won't be that bad as long as he's played as like a support burst character as opposed to your sole form of DPS because he can lag behind in pure DPS but you have people that can capitalize on his ultimate. He is just so, so crazy. I have to reiterate that he is so strong right now that he is being played in almost every single high elo KR game. At least one of him, if not multiples of him, are in every lobby and they're all doing well. That is how strong this character is, so you should really try and get to learn him at least if you want to climb really quickly until they definitely, hopefully, hotfix him in I think the Monday or Tuesday patch. So get that LP while you can. The next character I want to talk about is going to be Chloe. Chloe kind of survived the last patch pretty well compared to Hart, who has been replaced by Bernice. Um, there are a few Chloe players that I found that have been continuing to play Chloe and have been climbing pretty consistently and were not replaced by Bernice players, so that should go to show how consistent Chloe is comparatively to a lot of the other AD carries that exist on the menu at the moment. So with Chloe, you're going to just go standard auto attack. She does have a decent skill floor where you have to manage Nina a lot, and the hotkey for Nina is unfortunately still not reboundable, so you will have to deal with holding alt to navigate her. My personal recommendation for Nina would be to play her as back as possible and use her as a second health battery just because you need her to be alive to use your ultimate. And a common mistake a lot of Chloe and Nina players do is they put Nina in the front and then aren't able to micro her in time and then are forced to either back off because they can't ult or ult to save Nina which burns an important cooldown. So just by default I recommend keeping Nina a safe distance behind you and using your own body to shield and then when you get dove you just ultimate or you E away and then call it there. And just remember to be very aggressive with Chloe's auto attacks. She does a lot of damage, especially when you get the Suter Sauna upgrade, and you can really stat stick and beat out people very easily when you wouldn't otherwise if you were just running away and trying to kite. The next character I want to talk about is going to be Hyomu. Hyomu was one of those characters that kind of seemed overshadowed by Bernice, but I did see a few Hyomu players continue to climb with him despite a lot of the other ones swapping to abuse meta. He is going to be your very stock standard bruiser. He's going to dive in and try to hit the wall stun and be impactful in that way. He is fairly weaker compared to before the patch, but the fact that he's still being played even after these harsh nerfs show that if you play him well, you do get rewarded. And so I do recommend picking up, picking up Kyomu if you can. He is pretty straightforward compared to stuff like Chloe and a few of the other characters I'll talk about, but I think there's still a lot of nuance in him, especially with his wall stun angles and just understanding how to block damage and incoming CC with his W. You can't really go with, wrong with Hyungwoo, and I think you could pretty much learn him for your entire Eternal Return lifespan, but just understand that he goes through ups and downs because I think Nimble Neuron doesn't like him being very strong for very long, so we'll see where he goes if he continues being picked a lot in Korea. 
The next melee I want to talk about is going to be Luke. Luke has been getting very popular, not because he can win games, but because he can kill people very quickly. It looks like the best Luke players are currently going more of an assassin style with high AP stack and very little regard for their own lives. I think they're using the W AoE healing, which requires an evolution point, and then really surprising their enemies with that second burst of HP. Because of that, he's able to assassinate people super easily, and while he does fall off pretty hard later in the game, especially the likes of Bernice's and Chloe's running around and just one-shotting you with auto attacks alone, he can snowball very efficiently, and you do have a few options with your build to be tankier if needed. So if you want to play very aggressively early game and you do enjoy playing Luke, I know he's very popular, then right now seems like a pretty good time, just be aware that you do have to play pretty aggro or else you do fall off and you kind of just fade away without a whimper. The next character I want to talk about is Tazia, who might be the only mage that's on this list, ironically enough. I know that a lot of people think mages are super strong at the moment, but it seems like there's a few other characters that have edged them out just a little bit, namely Bernice. So, Tanzia is really strong at the moment because I don't think Noble Neuron really understood what to nerf about her. They did nerf her defense by 4 and her slow on her E that no one ever noticed by like half a second, but it turns out that Tazia is just really strong because of her insane shield values and her ability to snowball a fight if the fight goes well, which when paired with the likes of Bernice and Luke makes a lot of sense because Tazia wants to kite into you and not away from you. She is a pretty high skill 4 character because you have to be very comfortable with just going straight in and understanding her combos with how you have to like delay your Q cast when you cast W to make sure that the wall emerges and understand how to wait out your ultimate to slam them properly. There's a lot going on with Tazia, but she is very fundamentally interesting to play and I think you can't really go wrong with playing her just because I don't think Nimble Neuron looks like they're willing to nerf such a complex character to the ground. So while she might be tuned down a little bit more in the future, I don't think she'll ever be completely unplayable, so you're probably in good hands if you choose to pick Tazia. So with all the specific characters out of the way, I want to cover the past few characters I've talked about before. I do think that all the tanky melees that I mentioned in the last video, Eleven, Estelle, Elena, and Lennox are still all very playable, but because Estelle has been nerfed down, the play rate of those tanks have kind of all spread out evenly. So if you're wondering where all the tank players are, it's because they're all now on different tanks, which I think is a pretty good balance for the tank characters which is honestly very impressive, but if you're trying to climb, you should understand that if there already is a tank player on your team, then maybe try and pick up a different character to bounce it out. Because of the nerfs, it doesn't seem like double tank is as viable anymore. I think with certain compositions it is, but obviously since we're solo queuing, that's a lot less reliable. So if you're an Estelle player, you should probably learn to pick up Elena or Eleven just to be more versatile as a frontliner. Estelle was by far the most dominant frontliner in the past, but it seems like she's fallen off a good amount. We'll just see if it's more of like a placebo, oh she's been nerfed kind of hard so let's stop playing her, or if she is truly that much worse after this patch. Elena, while getting nerfed in her riding ability, has still been very strong for just crowd controlling and snowballing fights as well. Um, I think you could probably pick up Elena whenever you want, same thing with Lennox, she's very good for catch and if you pair her with Bernice you can probably make some pretty sick picks later in the game. And then Eleven obviously is just going to be your main frontline bruiser who can never go wrong, so they can choose as you will there, I don't think any of the tanks are particularly difficult to play. I think, oh, the fifth tank I was thinking about, Mai, is a bit more complex than those other four, but if you want to play a character that's just a lot more versatile in general, uh, I think Mai is pretty flexible in that regard. She wasn't nerfed at all in the last patch, so if you were good at her before and you're seeing good performance, then you should continue to see good performance now. And I think that's pretty much it for the characters to look out for for this patch. I know it's a pretty short video, but I don't think I need to really go into that much detail as to why characters are strong, especially with the hotfix coming out hopefully in a few days. That should tone down a lot of these problematic characters by a good amount. Obviously you guys might be wondering about a lot of other characters like Suwa or Dina in this list, but the fact of the matter is that it looks like they're not as good for solo queue. I'm sure that in pre maze they're a lot stronger because of how they can make their kits mesh together, but at the moment the meta is so dominated by Bernice that that's really all there is to talk about. So I guess if you're at the end of the video and you just want to hear the last bits, play Bernice, learn him, abuse him for the next few days, and then maybe he'll be gone. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you have a good day or night wherever you are, and I'll talk to you guys later, Bye bye